This week, we're going to kick off with a story that we're really excited about. Yesterday, DJI announced that they are launching the Matrice 100. Just watch this. The new AV is a stripped back machine that will fly for 20 minutes with one battery pack carrying a 2.2 pound payload. DJI told us that it includes everything needed to fly with minimal assembly and no need for tuning or programming. The M100 is made for developers to test sensors, processors and other bits of tech. Things like FLIR's leptin infrared cameras that can sense temperature differences to just a tenth of a degree. But the drone is just the half of it. It was launched with this. Another innovation of the Metris M100 is the inclusion of our new avoidance system called Guidance. This incredibly intricate system tracks the area around the Metris M100 from all sides, down, front, rear, right and left. This means that the Metris M100 is always aware of its surroundings and will automatically adjust its flight path when closing in on objects or obstructions. That is just amazing! Now, all of us, anyone, can fly without worrying about trees or ski lifts. Well, I say anyone. Anyone that's got a spare $3,299 for the drone and a further $999 for the guidance system. But we are very excited to see what people will be doing with this drone. Next up is the unlikely partnership of NASA and Verizon. The pair are set to test an air traffic control system for drones at their Ames Research Centre in Silicon Valley. It comes after the near miss between a drone and a commercial passenger plane over New York that we talked about last week. So why did NASA need Verizon? Well, as the biggest wireless communication network in the US, they have a lot of phone towers. And with the existing air traffic control system lacking the capacity to deal with drones, these towers could provide the infrastructure for the proposed unmanned aerial systems traffic management. That, of course, they don't want people crashing into their phone towers. As well as monitoring drone flights, however, NASA hoped to introduce geofencing into the system using GPS and RFID to create no-fly zones. So if you do want to peek into the White House, then you better do it sooner rather than later. The system will also allow them to ground drones in bad weather and manage priorities in the ever more congested airspace. Unfortunately, NASA's budget is shrinking and the ambitious project could see it overstretched. Even with more funding, however, it's still very early days. Verizon is scheduled to finalise its concept by 2019. In other words, it'll be another four years before they even know what they're trying to do. So in the meantime, just don't fly near an airport. I mean, how many more times have I got to tell you? Jesus. In other news this week, EasyJet, that's right, the uh, orange budget airline, have teamed up with Bristol Robotics Lab Measurement Solutions and drone builder Coptocraft to create drones designed to carry out safety inspections of their aircraft. Using LiDAR, a thing like radar but that uses lasers instead of radio waves, the drone is pre-programmed to fly around the plane, building up a millimetre accurate digital map of it. This makes it much easier for engineers to inspect aircraft and find faults, but also means that there is a lot less clambering up and down ladders. In China, drones are being used to catch students cheating in the National College entrance exam. The test is so tough that some students have taken to mounting tiny cameras to their glasses so they can send the questions to an accomplice who then provides answers through an earpiece. However, in the city of Luan, a quadcopter will now patrol the exam centre, monitoring radio signals and relaying their location to the exam invigilator's tablet. Busted. The Chinese fun police have also used a beta version of the new DJI Matrice M100 we were talking about before, along with its awesome guidance system, to detect illegally parked cars. They've cleverly managed to adapt the depth sensors with some help from Intel to catch the people of Shanghai when they just pop to the shops. And staying in Asia, Japan looks set to tighten up on drone use. Tokyo have been pretty twitchy about drones since one was found on the Prime Minister's office roof, reportedly carrying radioactive material. New draft legislation would introduce a programme of licensing, impose an after-dark curfew and restrict flight primarily to rural areas, although apparently users who take out sufficient safety precautions will be permitted to fly near airports. What? That's it for this week, so if you've got any stories that you would like us to cover, we'd love to hear from you. Please tweet us at the underscore flight club, and until next week, goodbye.